My name is Michael Fake here. My film is Kojo, and I'm a Brooklyn-based filmmaker. I'm a big fan of documentaries. I've made a, a, a couple of documentaries in the past. My, my thing is I just want to show a person, a talented individual, as honestly as I can. Jazz is creativity. If it's over a funk beat, if it's over a rock beat, if you have a bass and drums, that's jazz, man. Everything that you see, it's only to show Kojo as honest as possible. So in the interviews, he's center frame because it's all about him, you know what I mean? So that was very specific. You know, even when he's performing, it's all, the focus is mainly on him. So that was one thing that I really wanted to come across when, when making the film. And you know, if that's a trademark or whatever I do, then, you know, so be it. The, real, the reason why Kojo is such a great subject is because, one, he's incredibly intelligent for his age. I mean, when we shot the film, he was only 12 years old, but already he has such a huge wealth of jazz knowledge. He just understands jazz music, and to be 12 years old and to understand the craft and to play at the level that he plays at, it's truly amazing. I mean, you, people, you can call him a prodigy. Practicing is hard, fun, and frustrating at the same time. One day you're like, oh man, I wish I got that together today. And then uh, when I go outside playing basketball, I hear rhythms in my mind. I'm like, see you later. And I run home. I'm trying to get it. I get on the drums. I'm like, come on, come on. And I got Fakita. I'm like, oh, come on, man. The other thing about it is he's very charismatic. So, you know, he's he he is very energetic and he's gonna say what's on his mind, you know, and I think that kind of shows through, or when you watch the film, you can see him just being himself. My dad influenced me a lot. I learned a lot from him, from leadership, just everything my whole life. He comes from a very, very artistic family, and it's he's surrounded by it all the time. He performs with his dad, he performs with his mom, so they are very much in his life, and he's absorbing all that knowledge, all that, all that, uh, all that talent, you know, it's just, it's just there. And um, yeah, they play a big role in his life, and you can see it. I want to get more of a uh, complex music into people's minds. You know, people on the street just sit on the street and have no purpose to be there. I want to put, put some music in their mind and have a purpose to, you know, live. More complex thinkers. That's basically it. You know, in the film, Kojo talks about um, having kids or getting kids uh, open to the idea of embracing jazz music, not necessarily as jazz music, but as complex music, um, only in the sense where in today's music, um, a lot of hip hop, you know, there's freestyling, there's, you know, there's a lot of, there's 16 bars, and there is room for improvisation, but it's very small. Whereas with jazz, there are whole moments, there are stretches where you can just go on and just totally improvise and be as creative as you want. And I think that's kind of um, the complexity that Kojo wants other kids to experience. Um, and I think it does have that effect. A lot of kids, they're very receptive to the film. They love the film. They're seeing someone that's of their age playing at such a caliber level. It's almost inspiring. I mean, if I saw that film as a kid, I would want to play the drums. I mean, when my mom took me to go play piano, I didn't want to play piano. My instructor, she was old. You know what I mean? I'm playing tunes that, that just didn't really resonate with me. But here, you see a kid who's charismatic, who's cool, who's just, just attacking the drums like it's nobody's business at such a high level. I mean, I think, you know, any kid who watches it or any, any person who watches it will just be inspired by it. Drummers that have influenced me. Well, Tony Williams, uh, Elvin Jones, Philly Joe Jones, Papa Joe Jones, uh, Louis Hayes, Jimmy Cobb, Tootie Heath. So we were trying to figure out ways creatively that we can still show what Kojo is talking about um, but still kind of show it in a really expressive and dynamic way. And so that's when we thought about doing animations. And the first person that popped into my mind was my twin brother, my fraternal twin brother, Chris. Um, and he's been animating all his life. He is a professional animator. He works as an animator. And so I basically reached out to him and asked him, hey, would you be available to animate these particular segments within the film? And um, he agreed, and um, I would send him these segments, and he would animate them. He'd send them back to me, and I would just be completely floored because it's all his creativity, and you know, it's a it's a good thing to get to work with with your siblings, and you know, working on something creative, you know, with family who are equally as creative. It's a, it's a very good experience all around. The film, pretty much all of the film, is shot in Harlem. You know, and I feel that um, the B-roll shots that we shot of him interacting with the people. So I feel like Harlem 
you know, yes, I would say Harlem is a character in the film, but you know, the film is all Kojo and you know, I didn't I wasn't really telling him what to do or, you know, what to say. This was just, you know, a musician being candid and I was just filming him the entire time. My name is Kojo Odu Romy. 